Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and I have not done my hair tonight. <laughs> so, we'll see how many followers it makes me lose or gain. Uh, doesn't really matter, but it is in my hair. And uh, I figured I've only got um, about an hour before I'm going to go in and take a shower and go to bed anyway. So why, you know, add extra... Why waste it? So, this is my hair, what, how it naturally looks normally, and uh, tonight we have a lot to do, so I'm just going to start building and going. Um, for the most part, I'm just going to be building my bridge uh, and talking to you guys. There's a lot of things that um, have been going through my mind about the channel, about YouTube, about life in general. But... More importantly, I wanted to kind of explain what my channel is. So if this is your first time watching, hit that subscribe button and like and, and or there's a never mind. Um, one of the biggest annoyances to me is is the YouTube videos that are like like this video or there's going to be a snake in your bed tonight. No, there's not. There's no. No. There's absolutely nothing that can be done on YouTube on videos to physically make you do something in the real world. So <sighs> There's a caveat with that as well, so don't take that statement as complete truth. <laughs> but um, speaking of like truth in the internet and everything else, there's a lot of bad stuff out there on the internet. And I don't want to sit here and lie to you guys and be like, no, the internet is safe and wonderful place. No, no. The internet is scary. And what's even more scary is it's us. That make it that way. It's not some evildoer. It's not a bad guy. Um, it's us. We are the ones who make it the way it is. So I hope you're doing your part to do do good, to do right. And if you're not, there's not really too much I can do about it anyway. But just a just a thought in general. Um. Whoa. Hold on, can I can I reach that? Hold on. Hi. There we go. So what is my channel about? Well, my channel in general is gameplays. Well, message. Hello. And it's for the general public, it's for kids, and it's for adults' parents. Um if you're a single person who's going to college and watching my videos, I hope it's because like four years ago, whenever I started, you'd started subscribing to me and you just happen to stay connected in that way. That would be amazing. But um, for the most part, my content is not geared towards you. It is not um, Far Cry gameplay or Grand Theft Autos or anything of that sort. I don't scream. I don't make a lot of noise. I don't go crazy and just start screaming for no reason. Every once in a while I'll make a funny sound or like <clears throat> burp into the microphone, but I mean that's that's about the extent of my crudeness. Um, so why am I telling you this? Well, because um, I've whoa, I've watched the gentle decline of my channel and it's it's not really a decline because I mean it's still growth. It's just up until about, what, two years ago? So, I mean, it's been, it's been a while. Up until about two years ago, my channel had a nice steady growth of about $2,000 per month. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Um, but then there was this shift in uh, Fortnite in gameplays in Roblox itself and everything just started going down and I don't think it's my content because my content really has not changed it really has not it's still just me playing Roblox and giving advice and talking to kids and talking to parents so what changed I think and I could be completely wrong I think that it's the audience that's changing and to be truthful, that's that's good. That's very good. That shows me that like those of you who started on my channel are growing up and you're maturing or you're going into 
new times and like it's it's a advancement it's moving forward which is what i want you guys to do that's what life is it's uh adapting overcoming and becoming grown up <laughs> unlike my channel which is still same old me um but i really i really did want to kind of re reiterate like what my channel is and it's not a high speed low drag make as many subscribers as possible kind of channel and it's never meant to be my original intent has always been make fun gameplays that i would be proud to have my kids watch to be proud to be a part of and i still am i'm very proud of what my channel is what my channel ugh, has become and I don't want to change that. I don't see it changing anytime soon. Um, my kids are 12 and 9 right now. And, you know, once they hit 13 and 10, those are some big numbers. That's the first teen year and it's the first double digit for my son. Like, that's, that's a big change. And that's coming up here in just a couple of months. So I wanted to kind of give you a heads up that I will probably start bec becoming more inclusive to teen games to I missed it oh my gosh I cannot believe I just missed that <clears throat> to becoming more teen friendly versus family friendly in general what does this mean I'm not gonna just start going off and being like flipping this and and bad mouth that and everything that's not it's still not tactful to do. I mean, even in general conversation, you don't drop curse words and stuff like that. And it might look cool and stuff for for somebody saying it on the internet. It's not cool, all right? Even, I will say this to Markiplier himself. I will say it to Jacksepticeye. I'll say it to PewDiePie. You drop any curse word, even relatable curse words, such as um, words that you would be okay saying in the UK versus words that you're not okay saying in the US that you'd probably get in trouble in school for saying. Those words, why? There's like over 30 million words, and, and that's just a, a number, in the US, in English language, and now you have multiple languages. Why a curse word? I mean, is it to express a little bit more? No, it makes you sound unintelligent. It makes you sound like you don't know any other words. Especially when you make like every single word in a sentence a curse word. Um, so no, I don't expect that I'm going to start changing the way I speak. But I will probably start allowing more video games that have that kind of speak in them. Um, a lot of you <laughs> messaged me today and you're like, Oh my gosh, you're playing Watch Dogs. That's not family friendly. You're right. It's not family friendly. I play I play other games off camera that are not family friendly. And just so you know, I curse. Oh, what? Code? Yes. In in conversations with like coworkers and stuff like that, I occasionally drop a word here and there. I was in the Marine Corps for 4 years, which probably is not really an excuse, but you kind of become accustomed to it and it does become part of the daily language. But when it comes to presenting myself on the internet and not doing my hair, I'm probably not going to, you know, drop the words because there's no need to. There's so many other things I could be talking about or expending my energy towards that I don't need that. <clears throat> so. <sighs> it's just a bunch of talk. I mean, that's, that's all this is. It's just internet talk, right? There's no meaning behind it, right? wrong there is very much very much influence oh come on influencing purposes behind everything that i say or do on the internet and you might not realize it now but you kids you teenagers who happen to be watching me you are going to become influencers you are going to become the decision makers you will eventually grow up, go to college, go to school, go to the workforce, and probably come into a position of power. And I hope that something I've said or something I've done 
had an impact on you. And that's good. That's a really good feeling. I don't want to sit here and sugarcoat it and say, oh, I'm going to live forever and I'll be here for the eternity. That's not happening, you know? And if my, my quest for immortality doesn't work out, I would like to know that there was something that I left behind for others to follow. And that's this. Be a good person. Be nice, you know? And accept others for who they are. Because growing up, I didn't have a lot of people accepting me. Or I didn't think they understood me. Because of the ADHD and because of my behavior and because of my interest. It's just, it was just very much different. Different feeling. So, I don't want you guys to think that you're alone. I don't want you to think that you're weird if you're a college student who's single and still watching my videos. It's okay. If you feel alone, uh, <laughs> speak to my Discord. <laughs> you're not alone. There's plenty of people out there. And whenever I speak to, to the camera, it's very personal. It's very you and me talk. Because I, I know the feeling that you have because everybody experiences it. So don't think for a second that like, oh, I'm the only person in the world who has this problem and no, it's horrible. It's not. I promise. I've had that feeling. I know exactly what you're going through. And um, this is also called a method called relatability. So I give something of an experience that I had whenever I was a child, and then you can relate to that, whether you're a child, a teen, a college student, parent, or grandparent. And the reason that works, the reason that you feel that, is because everyone has that experience. Um, we took an endoscope test. Not endoscope, it's a isotope? No, it's not isotope. Um, it's a personality test, but it's very in-depth. And when I read what I was, I, uh, it was a little bit more truth than I wanted to know. It was, it was dead on. I mean, it was exactly my personality and everything else. So it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Um, but it, it was 100% true. And I still don't know how I feel to feel about it, but uh, if you were wondering, I am a four, which is uh, a very passionate, very um, wanting to fit in, looking for others' approval kind of feeling, and that's that was huge. That was a eye opener as to my personality and to what I felt. So. Throughout my entire life, growing up in, 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 a, in a small town with big ideas and a lot of people were just okay with what they were or who they were or where they came from. And this is no offense to my hometown or to my neighborhood or whoever. So like, okay, for example, if there's anybody watching this channel who used to go to school with me or your kids used to go to school with me and you think that I'm insulting you, I'm not. I promise. It's the fact that I felt like I probably was supposed to be in like New York City or some big city town, you know, and where I could like blend in with the crowd and just kind of disappear. I was not meant for farmland, agri agriculture, and stuff like that. And that's just me. Um, and you can see it in my life. My dad, he grew up um, with a family with uh, three brothers, and he grew up on a farm. He, uh, his original school had like K through 12 all in the same classroom. They rode horses to get to class, and I just, I don't feel like I, I, fall into that category. Every, every single one of my friends, you know, they would sometimes take off uh, a couple weeks during the summer 
or during the fall to do harvest. And we would have harvest fall festivals and... <laughs> okay. When everybody else would go out to the football games to go celebrate and cheer on the, the local high school team, I would be wanting to go play Dungeons and Dragons in my basement or go to... Um, go online and play video games or do LAN parties. I mean, I was very much the nerd, but at that same time, in a different instance, I was also the kid that <laughs> bought rollerblades and went into the city to go skate at the skate park and, and grind the rails at the, at the college and get chased by security off the campus. I was that kid. And then when we were done with that, we would go and have coffee at Churchill Coffee whenever it was still around in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. because it was the only 24-hour sh coffee shop open. So, very much different. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to wake up at six o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning and go out and feed pigs or, or milk cows or do any of that. Um. Hunting. Hunting is big around my area. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I live in Missouri, uh, near the Springfield area. And that, by the way, that is in my um, my P.O. box. So I'm not like, whoa, this is where I live. Don't freak out. I know a lot of you, like, don't ever give away your personal information, especially, like, that much. That was way too much. But... <clears throat> had somebody contact me on the internet the other day and they said uh, please contact me about the leaking of your information in this uh, this travesty of a situation okay um, I just said yeah it's out there what's up and I still haven't gotten a response back um, it has been leaked in the past move do I need to move that one no that one's good and for the most part, it's it's a scary thing. Absolutely, nobody wants their information out there. But if you find yourself on the end of a doxing, which is the leaking of your personal information, don't freak out, okay? First off, do you know how much effort it takes to actually go and like look up an address and look up telephone numbers and stuff like that? It does not take much. Your information, whether you want it to be or not, is already on the internet, and you can be found. So don't freak out. Now, what to do to prepare if somebody has said they are doxing you, and they are releasing your personal information? Well, first off, contact your local law enforcement, and just let them know the situation of what's happening. They will most likely make you a case, and that case will be documented and stuff like that. But... Beyond that, they're not going to do anything. Because there's really nothing to do. The amount of effort that it would take somebody to actually go to your address and do anything, that would be on... If that happens, then yeah, there's a problem. But, for the most part, nobody's going to go through that much effort. Now, I might have a fan show up every once in a while, and I warn you, if you show up at my door unannounced and I don't know you... I am probably not going to answer the door. <clears throat> if you're persistent, I won't say anything else. Just know that if you want to do something like that, I will do meetups at uh, public things, the fair, the circus, conferences, stuff like that. Don't come to my house. Anyhow. Um, that was way off topic of what I was wanting to say in the first place <laughs> which was it's basically the uh, the growth of the channel and the direction I plan on going oh come on no you silly oh you didn't I did okay and I did it again <laughs> so for the most part that's what my channel is it's advice it's it's talking and it's just plain like the entire time I've been sitting here Roblox now, if you watch some of the old 
uh, vlogging channels, they will display some kind of gameplay going on. And it's not, like, great gameplay, but, I mean, they're talking about completely other subjects going on just without a face cam. Um, most of them are insulting and they're making fun of people, which I never approve of. Never. So, if you're getting bullied on the internet, somebody's saying things, that's just it. They're just saying things. And there's, there's no truth behind it. And what's sad is they think they can hide behind the anonymity of the internet. It's not anonymous. Like, even anonymous isn't anonymous anymore technically um but they do have a web uh, uh, a uh, youtube channel which by the way i subscribe to um let's see here oh uh if you are looking for a good hack channel uh, a good place to get information and stuff and it's gotten a little more corporate since it started hack 5 h a k 5 beautiful beautiful channel Love it. I've been around with them for the longest time. And what brought this up was I saw Matt Pat doing a uh, game theory. Oh, I heard a tweet. Doing a game theory about um, Watch Dogs, because I happen to be playing Watch Dogs lately. And uh, who was on there but Snubs and what, who was it, Morbix? I, I don't remember this guy's name. Anyhow. Totally fanboyed whenever I saw them on there. Oh my god, oh my gosh, it's the crew of Hack 5! So, anyhow. We're just gonna put these back real quick. Do, do, do. I pulled them out so I could go sign some bases the other day. I don't, I don't need them. Uh, okay, let's do these 10 at a time. Let's move this up there. We'll only do 10. Because I realized by doing a bunch of them at once, it just kind of doesn't work out the way I wanted it to. One, oh, come on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I need ladders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Now, if we wanted exact measurements, we could probably do that. Um, so, this right here is eight units tall. This is only four units tall. And we can tell that by this. Um, so, here's a door, right? If we go into floors and we do... Oh, no. I don't have any... I've got no blueprints on this one. Okay. Totally gonna get distracted for the last seven minutes of, uh, of the video. Actually, no, I won't do that in this one. Um, if you have a single tile, okay, that is a one by one by 0 0.2 square, but it's a, it's a perfect unit, technically. The, the small floor is a one by one by one. That is a unit inside lumber. Uh, if you take these one by ones and you measure them across, you'll have eight right here, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. This is a exactly the center of the doorknob is exactly four and uh, no, it's at four, four in both directions, which makes it right in the middle. So if you wanted to, um, I could calculate out because the door length itself is eight minus two, one unit on this end, one unit on this one. So it's actually six. So these are four, these are six. I could measure out to see exactly how many doors go into uh, ladders themselves, if I wanted to, but I'm not going to, because who cares? It's, you know, it's just the start of school and we haven't gotten into mathematics yet. But you could totally use this as references if you wanted to. You'd be like, yeah, um, when talking about units, they could um, be translated into feet. Which you could, I mean, if you wanted to. Change the uh, units of measurements. What if, uh, what if, like, to scale, my character is actually 20 feet tall, and a normal human being would be, like, right down here at 6 foot? You know? Just the thought about units and scales. Which is why we talk about units in um, Roblox Studio. Because 
you have the restrictions of moving something only. Oh, I almost lost that big piece. You see that? That was like right on the edge. Anyhow. Where was I going with this? I have no clue. Don't even remember. What were we talking about? I've not had much coffee today. In fact, I've had one cup of coffee. And uh, I don't want to say I wasted it. But I completely used it for playing Watch Dogs. And I'm just going to keep talking about Watch Dogs. Because it's amazing. Uh, in Watch Dogs. Non-family friendly game, by the way. In Watch Dogs, you play Aiden Pierce. Who is an elite super hacksaw. And you use your cell phone to go around and hack things, which is a bit far-fetched. It can be done, but you're not going to want to do it from a cell phone. Why, you ask? Because the cellular service is actually very monitored. Um, if you have a cell phone right now, you probably fall under the one, one of the big threes. Verizon, AT&T, or Sprint. I think it's Sprint. Verizon, AT&T, okay, those are the two, like, big dogs. Um, there's also T-Mobile, there's also all these other things from that. Um, for the most part, all cell phone towers themselves, those are the backbone to everything. And they're monitored. All the traffic that goes in and out, it's monitored. So do I see somebody hacking from their cell phone? Sure, can happen. You can do it. Um... Would you, would it be feasible for like pivoting from one camera to another, to another, to another? Not likely. Not in the way that they did it on the, the video game. That was very much Hollywood stunt stuff. So it's glorified for the movie and the game. Now, there are ways to install Linux onto your cell phone by rooting your phone and then adding the OS. Um, uh, what is it? DSL, which is a, a version of Linux that's really tiny, tiny Linux, and that's a full-scale operating system, but, I mean, for the most part, Androids are full-scale operating systems. What is going on with my computer? Hey, stop it. So, if you take the uh, functionality of work and business, what do you actually use your cell phone for anymore? except making phone calls, sending emails, looking up information every once in a while. So that construct, the idea of what makes a computer, why does somebody need a laptop or a, a desktop or a station to work, um, it's changed. Especially in the last four or five years. We don't need to save files onto the computer anymore. That's what OneDrive's are for. That's what cloud storage is for. And if you lose your computer, or if you crash your computer, who cares? All your files are out there on the, the drives, out there on the internet. You know, it's a it's a different way of thinking, and uh, which has its own security problems, its own security risks, stuff like that. If somebody owns your computer, you know, just turn the computer off. You've got all your files stored out there on OneDrive. Wipe and reload the machine. Who cares, you know? Um, don't fall for scams. I know, that's a random thing to say. Don't fall for scams. Of course not, Code. I would never do that. Um, I'm talking about these things, these pop-ups that keep happening where it's like, you have a virus, contact us now, call this number. Don't call it. Because it's not real. Just restart your computer. It'll go away. Basically, what's happened is the Internet Explorer popped up and said, uh, Hey, message, blah, 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 blah. Somebody typed something in. And you can say anything at once. I mean, if you wanted me to, I could actually make a tutorial on how to make pop-ups on Internet Explorer or Chrome. But I won't. <sighs> I'm just amazed at how susceptible people are to being gullible on the Internet. I want you to know that the Internet is good but it is not safe and you need to be vigilant on what is real and what's not <sighs> I think that's it I should be good I'm going to continue building for a little bit and get out of here and, and let you guys get to uh, 
get to your next class if you're watching me at school or uh, if you're in class right now tell the teacher I said hi and thank your teacher okay you only have to deal with one teacher she has to deal or he or she has to deal with like 26 30 of you so be thankful imagine if you had to deal with 30 teachers at one time hmm? just saying all right, there we go. Well, oh, should we see the length? Let's, uh, I, I know I just climbed all the way up here. Let's, let's see how far along we are. Would hate to get over to the other side and be like, oh no, we've built way too far. All right, and down we go. There we go. Walk it out, code. Walk it out. Walk it off. Hold on, I'm kind of turned sideways there. There we go. We'll just do an auto walk. By the way, if you want to auto walk, just uh, start walking forward, and then press the um, the sla that slash key. It's it's called a forward slash. Yeah, it, it it's a slash. All right, so the one that goes this way, that is a slash. The one that goes this way, that is called a whack. Uh, so if I were to say something like uh, whack whack code server whack share one, that right there is a, called a UNC path. It's a it's a network path. Whack whack and then the computer name and then whack the share name after that. Um, if I do slashes, I could say stuff like HTTP colon slash slash. So just so you know, backslash is a whack forward slash is a slat uh, forward slash is a slash uh, the pound sign is actually called a bash or a something else um, it could also stand for pounds it's a pound symbol from old school telephones pound which is also LDS pounds um, and then what's the other one stars so a star I call a splat and these are called a waka. And the reason they, they're called a waka is because they kind of look like the mouth of Pac-Man. Waka, 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 waka. <laughs> so to, to make a really secure password, you could do something like um, whack, whack, bash, waka, waka, dash, slash, slash. And that could be your password if you wanted to. But I mean, to a brute force, it wouldn't really matter. But... Anyhow, really hard to guess. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate, talking about the most randomness of things and the advancement of the channel and just my ADHD in general. I hope you were able to stand this episode. Um, leave a comment down below. Have you had any situations happen to you like that? Um, do you have ADHD yourself? Uh, what do you think of my hair without gel in it? Like, 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 and hit the like button. If you want, that's up to you. Or subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe down below. And stuff. <laughs> it's a Monday. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you very soon. Outro.